Good morning, guys, and welcome to our Last Tuesday Truth in the Stuck in the Mud series. My hope is that it has been an encouragement to you, particularly if you have felt stuck in your relationship with God recently. Well, today is our last Devo in the series. And to start off with, I want to ask you a question. What is a disciple? We've all heard the word disciple, especially in church circles. And naturally, our minds go to the 12 guys who hung around Jesus. They're the disciples. Correct. But actually, a disciple is simply a follower. A follower of somebody else. So, if you are a Christian this morning, if you are a follower of Jesus, guess what? You're a disciple. That's right, it's not just limited to Jesus' 12 friends. Okay, well, what is discipleship? What does it mean to be discipled? To illustrate this, I want to use an everyday example. Think of a young man who wants to become a car mechanic. So what he does is he joins up with another car mechanic and he becomes his apprentice. So day in and day out, this young man learns from this older, wiser, more experienced car mechanic. He's underneath the car with this guy. He's being shown the ropes. He's slowly learning how to fix a car. And in a few years time, he's going to be able to become a car mechanic himself. And he's more than likely going to fix a car exactly the same way that he saw the older, wiser car mechanic do it. He's been discipled by this man. That's what it means to be discipled. That is discipleship. Now, in our discipleship of Jesus, it is obvious that he is our discipler. He is the one who teaches us. He teaches us as we read the Bible. He teaches us through his Holy Spirit in us who speaks to our hearts. He teaches us through prayer. He teaches us as we we go to church together with other disciples. But there is another unique and special way that Jesus intends for us to grow in our discipleship of him. And that is through discipleship relationships with other people. Jesus intends for us to be discipled by older, wiser, more mature followers of Jesus, fellow disciples of Jesus. We see it throughout the Bible. Moses discipled Joshua. Elijah discipled Elisha. Eli discipled Samuel. Paul discipled Timothy. And Jesus decided to spend his three years discipling these 12 guys that we spoke about. Discipleship is the way of God. Throughout my life, God has provided me with a number of older, wiser people who have played discipleship roles in my life. As a 16-year-old young Christian, I was discipled by someone who was more experienced, a friend of mine who was more experienced in his relationship with God. He was the one who introduced me to a youth group. And then what started to happen is I began to be discipled by my youth pastor, growing in my faith. When I got to university, I had the privilege of being discipled by an older person in my res. Today, I have various older men who I meet with regularly, who play a discipleship role in my life. These men throughout my life have taught me everything I know about being a Christian. They've taught me how to read and study God's word for myself, how to have quiet times, how to pray, how to share my faith, how to make wise life decisions. I have not grown more through discipleship relationships than anything else. God has used these men to significantly shape my life. Unfortunately, many of you don't have that experience. Many of you are all alone in your relationship with Jesus. There is no one helping you follow him. And so it is no wonder that sometimes you feel stuck. 
A child was never ever designed to go through life without parents. Helping, teaching, feeding, protecting. And some of you have no spiritual parents. Some of you have no spiritual parents, disciples, mentors, whatever you want to call them, because you don't think it's important. You think it's okay to fly solo. You really think you'll be fine going through this Christian life without anyone pouring into your life. But that's a myth. You weren't designed for life like that. And eventually you will get stuck if there's no one to help you. Did you know that there are even old people in our church who are still spiritual babies because they've had no one disciple them over the course of their lives? This is not an age thing. This is about realizing that it is the design of God, no matter your age, to always have someone pouring into your life. Even Pastor Lee Robinson, our previous senior pastor, still has older men who meet with him and pour into his life. Discipleship is a continuous process of growth throughout your life. You need to be taught how to follow Jesus. And let me say to you teenagers, coming to youth, listening to a devotion, being part of a Christian community isn't enough. I'm saying you need to find an older, wiser, more mature Christian And you need to commit to meeting with that person one-on-one or with a couple of others regularly, weekly, every two weeks at least, someone pouring into your life. Some of you want this. It's not a case of you don't think it's important. You're desperate for it. But you're all alone because you feel like there's no one like that in your life. There's no one who could play that role in your life. You might feel like no one cares enough to play that role in your life. But whether that is you or whether you're the person who thinks it's not important, I want to encourage you today to find somebody, find a mentor, find a discipler, and begin meeting with them weekly if possible, even if it's virtually in this season. Did you know that there are so many older people who are craving to pour into the lives of younger people? And you are privileged. You have a bunch of older, wiser youth leaders who long to get into your lives. And if it's not one of your youth leader, your connect group leader, there are young adults in our church who would love to play a discipleship role. And even other older people in our church. But it's just about us being intentional about finding them. Maybe you feel like there's no one like that. None of the youth leaders would fit. There's no one else who would pour into your life. But I want to say to you, if you have Christian parents, I encourage you to approach them to be your disciples. God hasn't just placed your parents in your life to put a roof over your head or to give you a monthly allowance. In fact, God has designed that our parents be our primary disciples. So if you have Christian parents, I want to challenge you to go to one of them and say, hey, mom, hey, dad, would you be willing to meet with me weekly and teach me everything that you know about being a Christian? If my, one of my girls did that for me, if they, if they approached me and asked me to disciple them in a formal capacity regularly, man, it would move me to tears. And I couldn't think of a greater privilege than doing that. Guys, if you have no one discipling you, You need to find somebody. You will get stuck in your relationship with God if you don't. Like I said, nothing has grown me more than discipleship. Your life will change as a result of it. And one day you will look back and you will be so grateful for discipleship relationships. And the best of all is one day, if you've been discipled, you can potentially pour the same kind of energy and invest into somebody else's life. You too can disciple a younger person and shape their life for eternity. Isn't that exciting? Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this series. My prayer is that you don't stay stuck. My prayer is that you continue to choose relationship with Jesus. Continue to pour out your heart with him. Continue to practice your spiritual disciplines. Continue to meet with a mentor so that you don't stay stuck.
I love you guys and I'm looking forward to our next series, which is called Jesus IRL, Jesus in Real Life. Looking forward to it. God bless you guys. Cheers.